Serengeti National Park in Tanzania is home to a wide variety of predators and carrion feeders. The largest aggregation of carnivores in all of Africa can be found here. Among them, the hyena clans remain the most mysterious, and for good reason. Their odd physical appearance and their tendency to feed on carrion have long caused them to be viewed with revulsion or, at least, indifference. At one time, they were thought to be solitary hermaphrodites, a faulty conclusion. In fact, the hyena is devoted to family life. The social organization of a hyena tribe is one of the most complex among mammals. A community's burrow is the center of its universe. The lives of about 50 hyenas revolve around it. In this large extended family, the males are subjected to the law of the females who hold absolute power. And nothing is left to chance. Each hyena occupies a precise rank within the family hierarchy. The female offspring automatically inherit the social position of their mother. A dominant male does exist in this society, but his power ends where the power of the last ranking female begins. A few months ago, three females seized power, and the old matriarch was demoted to fourth position. All the same, there are advantages to being the dominant male in the clan. He's tolerated in the den area by the females, and he fathers many of the babies in the family. Several times a day, the most powerful of the family gather in the burrow to engage in their usual ceremonies. Their genitals are the center of attention at these meetings. The genitals of the females resemble those of the males so closely that it is difficult to tell them apart. Their pseudopenis and scrotum are due to a high level of androgens, or male hormones. This phenomenon is unique among mammals. The hyenas conspicuously exhibit their genitals, which in this unique species signals submission. They greet each other, sniff each other, as if reinforcing their respective identities. Already, the cubs are aware of their rank. Dominance is not restricted to the adults. The dominant sib may force the subordinate one to starve to death when their mother is unable to produce sufficient milk for the whole litter. The weakest offspring are quickly eliminated. The dry season is drawing to an end and the weakening carnivores find fewer prey. The nursing hyenas are unable to feed their last litters. One of them, the eldest daughter of a recently deposed dominant female, decides to leave her progeny in the family burrow and venture off in search of food. Her week-long journey has taken her right into lion territory, but not one of the lions has deigned to part with even a morsel of its kill. Even the ever-famished vultures ravaged everything on their plates. As usual, the cheetahs are good providers for the hyena. They fear her and easily yield up to her the fruit of their labors. Today, however, there is nothing for her to appropriate, for the felines do not have enough energy to hunt. Alone, the hyena has no chance to run down and catch a healthy gazelle. Indefatigable, she continues her marathon across the savanna, covering more than 30 miles a day. During this time, her only son, now three months old, waits for her in the den. Exhausted, his flanks hollowed from hunger, he desperately seeks the teats of his aunt. But the female is charged only with watching over the little ones left in her care. She will only supply milk to her own offspring. The mother has returned to her clan's territory. Now she must find the trail leading to the den hidden somewhere in these 50 miles of dry savanna. Hyenas have a sort of inner geographical map of the Serengeti, which helps them when they move far away to go hunting. This, together with the scent left by the members of her family, guides her home. 
With her nose skimming the ground for the scent trail, she will sometimes flush out a young hare hiding in a bush or stumble onto a nest of ostrich eggs. Just enough sustenance to momentarily satisfy her hunger and produce a little milk for her baby. Normally, as soon as he sees his mother, the little one would scurry to her and feed greedily. But this time, no one moves. She fails to attract the attention of her sisters and cousins who are busily feeding their own progeny. Distraught, but obeying the family rules, she briefly greets her family members one by one. Near the den, she discovers her cub's small, inert body. It takes her a while, however, to realize that he is really and truly dead. For hours on end, she will protect his carcass from other hyenas who would devour him in a minute. This incident has disrupted the serenity of the group. The female who just lost her cub aspires to be the dominant hyena, as does the eldest daughter of the former matriarch. However, the three other females involved in the coup d'etat also proclaim their right to dominance. These aspiring new queens broadcast their demands for power loudly and clearly. Alone, and facing the wall of opposition thrown up by the three hyenas, the female has little hope of attaining dominant rank. In addition, the loss of her cub has also just jeopardized her position, since the offspring of dominant females reinforce their mother's status. A female without descendants finds herself in a weak position. Among the hyenas, power is always a family affair. The dominant male returns to pursue the females, but the females don't appear to be in the mood. In this case, he knows it is best not to insist. After all, his situation is almost enviable compared to the other subordinate males who have to wait for years before catching the attention of the females and so be able to mate. In the early morning, the male leaves the den area to go hunting. He follows a lioness who is stalking a herd of wildebeests. But the feline doesn't seem motivated enough to attack the wildebeests and disappears into the bush. A few hours later, the male hyena comes across the same herd of herbivores. He tracks the lioness. The hyena doesn't eat only carrion. Her predatory character has long been underestimated. Hyenas can kill a wildebeest alone, making use of their wiles to reach their goal. But here, 
the hyena prefers to save his energy and let the lion do the hard work of hunting. Remaining inconspicuous and still, the hyena awaits the events he knows will soon follow. The lioness waits for the ideal moment to swoop down on the herd. For now, the hyena must simply wait it out. Everything depends on the feline's decisions. Seized in a stranglehold, the wildebeest is doomed. The lioness's powerful jaws have severed the animal's vertebra. She is unable to hoist her prey out of the water. The pond water has evaporated during the dry season, leaving steep banks, so the lioness is forced to eat her prey on the spot. The hyena can finally start to move in. He is aware that the feline won't finish her meal if she risks exposure. Other carnivores can appear suddenly, at any moment. In addition, the lioness detests the water. If the hyena can manage to skirt around her, he might be able to make off with a few morsels. Patience remains a good weapon. but the unexpected arrival of a lone buffalo may play in the hyena's favor. Caught unawares, the lioness is forced to retreat. Curiously, the buffalo returns to the attack and drives the feline into her last place of refuge, high up in a sharp-needled acacia tree. For the hyena, it's an opportunity to seize the prey. Meanwhile, however, the water buffalo has released the lioness from her uncomfortable perch. Vexed, the hyena gives up. A little later, a new opportunity is presented to the solitary male. An isolated cheetah shows promise of a meal. But after the chase, the exhausted animal is at the end of his strength and is unable to eat his kill. Though alone facing this predator, the hyena still succeeds in intimidating it. To accomplish that, he simply needs to growl while his dorsal mane bristles.
In just a few minutes, the gazelle is entirely devoured. The hyena is able to gulp down 30 pounds of meat at a single meal, even after chasing its quarry several miles. Ten a.m. The heat is stifling. The male, sated, joins the females. Most of them have deserted the den, seeking relief from the heat under the shade of the acacia's umbrellas. Among the female hyenas, the daughters of the dominant ones automatically assume the rank of their mother. For the males, however, other criteria determine the acquisition of power. As a matter of course, a new immigrant male from another family finds himself in the lowest position in the hierarchical order. In order to approach the den and establish relations with the females, only one possibility exists. Wait for those in superior positions to die off. The present dominant male is now one of the oldest males in the family. Patience sometimes does pay. His role in the family is reproduction. His entire life is devoted to this activity. Since, among the hyenas, there is no particular mating season, the females alone choose the favorable moment. Before copulation, the male must mark his territory and then attract the female's attention. Hmm. Failed again. This female doesn't have a moment to herself. She has to watch over her little ones who are venturing outside for the first time. They were born at the entrance to one of the den's tunnels. The underground passages in which they are raised protect them from attacks by cheetahs and lions their chief predators. To further protect them, the mother remains in the center of the den and covers the entrance to the tunnels with her body. Hyenas are good wet nurses. They nurse their babies for 8 to 16 months, and the babies are real gluttons. They can suckle for five hours without interruption. This huge milk requirement is sustained by the hyena's specific diet. She devours her prey entirely including the calcium-rich bones and cartilage. Once adults, the males leave the family to lead a solitary existence. The females remain in their mother's clan their entire lives. The dominant male is still waiting for his moment. He now hopes to seduce the female who had lost her cub. To stop other interested males from getting in the way, he marks his territory. Everything in his behavior is designed to demonstrate his state of excitement to the female. The female offers no signal, appearing indifferent, but this doesn't discourage the male. Yeah. 
Chased by the female, he's finally satisfied. The frustrated males sometimes lick themselves for long minutes to quench the fire of their excitement. At the end of the day, the dominant females, along with their sisters and a few lower-ranking females, go off for the night to hunt. To satisfy the enormous appetite of their babies, they have to consume a lot of meat. Early in the morning, the hyenas awake to a problem. These young lions, around four years old, have stolen their prey during the night. The hyenas didn't even have the time to begin devouring it. Incidents like this occur when food is scarce. Young solitary lions stalk packs of hyenas and wait until they tire themselves out. Thus, the predators act like scavengers. But, after all, it's a question of survival. The lions have nothing to fear from this pair of jackals. A few morsels of meat will do nicely to satisfy their small appetite. The hyenas don't let go. Although a frontal attack would be doomed to failure, exerting constant pressure on the lions may prove to be profitable. The tension escalates. The lions have done their best, but little by little they lose ground. The dominant hyenas make a dash for the carcass as soon as the lions turn their backs on them. Normally, the dominant ones feed before the subordinates are allowed to eat. This morning, however, they are having a hard time asserting their dominance over the young females. But the dispute will stop there. Hyenas of the same family never kill one another for food. The dominant male would very much like to take part in the feast, but no one invites him. The females keep him at a distance. The dry season seems interminable, making life even more difficult for the hyenas. They are more aggressive than ever. Domestic conflicts multiply as the tension mounts. How much more can the clan take? The first April showers finally fall on the savanna. The hyena family remains still, waiting for the rains to break. It takes just a few days for the grasslands to become green again. The smell of damp grass has replaced that of dust. Soon after the first storms, the seeds germinate. New plants begin to push through the surface of the fertile soil and start to flower. The tall grasses will soon carpet these vast expanses in preparation for the large herbivores that will migrate here. The hyenas know that the large herds will return with the rain. The female who lost her cub has left for the hunt. <laughs> the rains have swelled the ponds, the traditional refuge for hippopotamuses. 
They too resume their family ties this time of year. The young males leave the watering holes where they were born. The females give birth to a new generation. The hyena knows this area well. When she goes hunting alone, she hides in the bush close to a hippo pool. She knows that some of them come here to die. But once again, the lions have been the quickest to sense the approaching end of this old patriarch's life. The youngest felines bite into the thick hide of the hippopotamus, already swollen with the heat. The hyena is badly outnumbered by the felines. She will only get a consolation prize. More than one million wildebeests and about 350,000 zebras will populate the Serengeti. A seemingly endless tide of these herbivores will head south and cross the dangerous Mara River at the Kenyan border. The hyenas, lions and cheetahs will kill a quarter of the population. Following behind the predators, a cleanup crew of vultures, jackals and other carrion eaters will sweep the savanna clean of the carcasses. The hyena plays an important role in the scheme of things. We now know that she hunts about 80% of her own prey, while almost half a lion's meal is comprised of carrion. The king of the savanna is not necessarily the one we think he is. But how is the hyena able to do this so efficiently? She has no rigid, predetermined strategy. She can move through large herds of herbivores for hours in a nonchalant manner. Moreover, the wildebeests allow her to approach the herd more readily than lions or leopards. Her attack is both unpredictable and unexpected. Perhaps this is the secret of her success. The hyena clan pays close attention to the first births of the season. The newborns are easy prey. A baby wildebeest had better keep up with the herd if he expects to dodge the predators. And his mother brusquely encourages him to do just that, under the watchful eyes of the male protectors. The adults constantly scrutinize the horizon, like watchmen making their rounds. The newborn learns very quickly. He finds his place in the herd and emulates the behavior of his elder siblings exactly.
On this misty morning, in the peak of the rainy season, the den comes awake. The hyenas venture out with curiosity. Each day, the cubs of the dominant mother gain a little more self-confidence. Obviously, their mother's abundant supply of milk has benefited them. She can produce more than three pints a day. Stronger and more agile than the other cubs in the tribe, the little females will remain in the den for almost one year. From birth, the hyenas imitate the adults in their struggle for power. Even when greeting each other, the young ones acknowledge and confirm their social positions within the family. The lower-ranking cub will always display her genitals to the others first. At this stage, it is still only a game. These rituals between hyenas of the same sex enhance the cohesion of the family. The characteristic lowing of the wildebeests comes to the attention of the dominant hyenas, and at times, initiative is taken for a raid on the herd. In their usual fashion, they fan out facing upwind. Even though it resembles a group hunting strategy, at any moment a hyena may rise from the ranks and act alone. Vultures serve as their guide. Even from a few miles in the air, they can spot a carcass. And from the moment they swoop down and pinpoint it, the hyenas move in. This time, the vultures get there first. The hyenas try to scare them off, but do so very cautiously. They fear the claws and beaks of the vultures, who always seem ready to strike at their eyes. While the hyenas prefer the entrails, they do devour the entire creature. A hyena's jaws are even more powerful than a lion's, exerting a pressure of three tons per square centimeter. No part of their prey is left intact. The standoff is without incident today. The menacing presence of the vultures keeps the hyenas at bay. Furthermore, the hyenas are away from their own territory and must remain united in case other predators attempt to lay a claim to their spoils.
Such a feast requires a long nap to digest. The hyenas swallow the enormous pieces of meat whole. Their stomachs must take on the task of slowly grinding it down. This expends so much energy that their body temperature rises. Water from the peat bog quells the heat and the mud discourages the parasites. In this bountiful season, the carnivores have nothing to complain about. There is no problem finding food. That is why the imminent demise of this baby wildebeest barely interests the dominant hyenas, who are still in the midst of digesting their earlier feast. Even hyenas have to take a break between meals. The little wildebeest has breathed its last, wetting the lust of the vultures. Other scavengers are also claiming their right to the kill. Most of the time, these birds can force hyenas from a carcass. They can fly at speeds of up to 40 miles an hour, giving them the advantage of selecting the best carcass parts before their competitors arrive. The dominant male takes advantage of this break to join up with the females. This time, though, the vultures aren't even the least bit concerned. The hyenas, indifferent, remain passive. His successive approaches and dominant position now enable the male to lay claim to the highest ranking females. But nothing can happen without the consent of the female. Her physical makeup, with her pseudopenis and her mock scrotum, is such that her total collaboration is required in order for the male to achieve his ends. A concert of guttural moons descends upon the plains of the Serengeti. Hundreds of thousands of wildebeests are beginning their annual migration northward. Destination, Kenya, more than 900 miles across the savanna. The route takes them directly across the hyena's den. One can marvel at the sight of these herbivores openly provoking their predators. But all animal behavior, even the strangest, can be explained. The wildebeests know that the hyenas will not attack. They have already eaten their fill, 
and they never take more prey than is necessary for survival. The presence of the herds places the young members of the family in danger. The herbivores attract other carnivores who may be lurking in the vicinity. The hyenas constantly guard their babies. To take their eyes off them for just a few minutes would put them in grave danger. The two young females of the dominant mother have already acquired their adolescent coats. The black of their coat has become speckled to give them a mottled appearance. These two will never be separated. When their mother dies, they will become number one and number two in the clan, unless other sisters are born. The abundance of game not only sates the appetites of the hyenas, but it also calms tension and conflict. A coalition of the dominant females can now rule without challenges from the tribe. The hyenas rival other large predators of the savanna in intelligence and efficacy. Elusive, they can abruptly change their behavior patterns, thereby surprising their enemy. Most often, they hunt alone, but when in groups, they demonstrate a unified front for the attack. They also know how to recruit allies at the very site of the hunt. Today, they have chosen to track a cheetah. The hyenas have already anticipated its behavior. Her attack will disperse the herd of wildebeests, leaving the slowest, the young, the sick, and the elderly behind. The hyenas can easily corner the stragglers and have only to help themselves to dinner. Rumors must cease. The hyena is not the evil, wicked, fearful beast it has been portrayed as. Although a carrion eater, this animal is also a ferocious predator that is a major player in the ecological balance of the savanna. Its disappearance would be a catastrophe for the African ecosystem. With the return of the dry season, the family structure will once again change. For the young males, it is time to become independent. For the young females, they will soon be forming a new coalition in an attempt to overthrow the dominant females. In the hyena society, nothing is automatically inherited. Above all, not power. <laughs>